Good afternoon, everybody. It is September 1st, 2012, a beautiful Saturday afternoon here at Smith Vocational High School in Northampton, Massachusetts. It is opening day for Northampton Youth Football. The NYFL is ready to kick off its season here on the Saturday of Labor Day. We're here at Frank Tudrin Field, and we have a three-game slate for you today. We're going to be starting off with the Pee Wees, who are third and fourth graders. And they are taking on today the Belchertown Eagles. My name is Andrew Shelfo, and I'm joined up here atop the press box by Rob Osberg. How are you, Rob? Out of breath after climbing the ladder? I'm fantastic. It is a glorious day for football. How can you not be fantastic on a day like this? Oh, my goodness. It is sunny. It is warm. We're on a black tar roof. And something new this year for the Pee Wee Division is the kickoff. Last couple of years, Rob, they never kicked off the ball. They just kind of gave one team the ball on the 40-yard line or so. So this is a new, a new thing for the Pee Wees. We're going to dance to the kickoff, man. <laughs> Looks like the Northampton Blue Devils are going to be kicking off to the Belchertown Eagles. Coaches are out on the field making sure they got the proper number of players in the proper alignment. This is an educational program here at the Pee Wee Division. You'll see the coaches on the field throughout the game teaching, encouraging, and picking up these guys when they get a little down. Football's a game, it's a tough game, and every once in a while somebody gets discouraged and those coaches are there to pick up their player off the ground, give them a pat on the back, and head them back to the huddle. And hopefully the coaches won't be the ones to get discouraged first today. There's the kick. The season has begun. It's good Jacob kick squirts Williams. out to the 26 yard line and they fall down on it. Now in, in Pee Wee Youth football, when the ball is on the ground, you cannot pick it up and advance the ball. So those folks just plopped on it. Had they scooped it up cleanly, they could have run, but they made a wise decision in just covering the ball and securing it for the first possession of the game. So the Blue Devils are going to start off on defense. We're going to get familiar with our roster here. Um, taking a look at some of the, well, there's a lot of players out there right now as the coaches sort out who's going to be on the field and off the field. I'm seeing number 65, Noah Renner out there at left end. And then right end, I'm seeing number 75, and that would be Owen Shelfo. The O-Dog. The O-Dog. This is his third year in this division, isn't it? Second year in the division. Second year. His first year playing over 100 pounds. We have all the weights on our roster now, Rob. I see that. All right. The, the Eagles break the huddle, and they hustle up to the line. Let's get some football action happening here on the field. Quarterback scans the line, makes sure everybody's in the right place. Linemen take one last boat look back at the coaches. Tackle shifts from one end to the other. Now it looks like we're ready. There's a snap. Looked like it was a, a botched exchange. Let's see who came up with it. Fumble on the play. Stays with the Belchertown Eagles. One of the things that's unique about Pee Wee Second football down. is the length of the field. The goal line is in 10 yards from the end of each goal, making the field 80 yards long. So although they're starting from what appears to be the 26 yard line, it's actually only about 16 yards from the goal line. Now the quarterback center exchange is of course vitally important for any good football game. Um, and these are third and fourth graders. A lot of them are playing football for the first time. So that's something to keep an eye on because that's not as easy as it looks. No, it takes lots of practice. And, Sam, uh, a quick reminder, 50-50 raffle tickets are coming around. The center position is one of the most challenging positions big. in football. Having a, a good center and a good exchange is key to initiating an effective offense. And last year, that was something the Pee Wees really struggled with. Second down and 10. There's a clean exchange. There's a handoff, looking for some room on the right-hand side. Finds the first hole, and then he's met by Jacob Renner. That's a nice tackle in the open that field, Rob. That was a Rob. terrific tackle. Boy, he, you know, we always talk about this division be the, being the pursue and grab division. Players hustle, 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 and they get real close, and they reach out and grab and kind of grab tackle. There was nothing grabby They're or down. reachy about that tackle. That was a stick by Renner. The coaches had to be very pleased bringing up third and about four. Belchertown runner did a good job of following his lead blocker through the hole. There was a nice hole that was opened up by the line, and then Mr. Renner put an end to the play, which was good. 
He did, and he, he made that play from, he looks like he is the uh, cornerback over there on the right side, so he hustled all the way across the field to make that play. So third down, and we're gonna call that uh, three and a half yards. Eagles break the huddle, hustle up to the line in their red, white, and blue uniforms. Third and four here. And it is running time, so these, these games do march along very quickly. There's the hand, there's the quarterback taking the snap. He is going backwards. He eludes two tacklers. Oh, Not nice going to elude the last that one. And that was number Rankin. 22. By number 22. Justin Rankins. Rankins. Justin, this Run is his Delta second Town year. Quarterback. Justin made a lot of number great seven, plays Jordan last Tyler. year. And if that's any indication, we can count on some big plays from Justin four, Rankins six, in the middle six, of that four, defense. Six. Nice play by Rankins there, bringing up fourth and about five to go for the first town. The Eagles do have a decision to make, and it looks like they're going to punt. And they won't actually punt. They will, the ball, ball will simply be advanced, what, 15 yards? 15 yards, line? yes. Belchertown has elected to punt. So that's a good defensive stand by the, the North Hampton Blue Devils. And I can tell you, Rob, I've, I've been able to see a couple of peewee practices this year. And one thing that really stands out is the speed that they have in their defensive backfield. And it showed there, boy, that was a terrific defensive play and really puts Hamp in a great position to start the season on offense. They're starting at five yards into the eagle side of the field. Don't forget to buy Gatorade for your players. So this will be the Blue Devils' first offensive possession, as we all know, for the first game. Um, the Pee Wees have played two scrimmages so far this year, uh, and in the scrimmages, they did very well against Frontier and against Agawam. So they're uh, looking pretty good this early in the season. They break the huddle, and the quarterback for the team, as I'm scanning my roster, is Braden Tutrin. He is making sure his linemen are in the right place. He has two backs behind him. And not surprisingly, Rob, they're the two players whose names we've already called, Justin Rankins and Jacob Renner. Takes the snap. There's a fumble exchange, but he manages to pick it up and fall down on it. Recovered by Northampton. It's going to be second down. Where have we seen that before, Andrew? <laughs> I hope I didn't jinx it by talking about all of last year. That's the way the Eagles started their season. Uh, the second play was much more successful for the second Eagles. Let's hope, hope Hamp has similar success on their second play. You can sense that there's some nerves out there on both sides of the line. And in the interest of full disclosure, I am the father of the center, so uh, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is also an advantage to having the coaches out there. They can kind of, as you say, Rob, if there are some nerves, they can kind of calm down and say, hey, just remember what we did in practice. Go out there, give it your best shot. It's a very challenging position, and not every snap that's bobbled is the center's fault. Sometimes the quarterback slips out of there too quickly, and that, in fact, looks like what happened the last Yeah, time. it looked like he took his eye off it a little bit. There's a clean snap, bounces it to the outside, and there's a fumble. There's also a flag on the play. I think, I think that might be a hold, hold, Rob. That was a hold out there, right. Well, that's too bad. Number number 25 had all sorts of room. Jacob, uh, Jacob Renner. That was Jacob Renner. Yeah. He had you know, some room. Um, the most effective play in Pee Wee football is go wide and run fast. <laughs> uh, we've seen that that play over and over again. If, if you can go wide and run fast, that's uh, usually good for a touchdown. And Renner looked like he was going to get wide, and unfortunately he got so excited that he fumbled the ball. It was all for naught anyway. That was a hold. But the penalty was declined, so that will bring up third down for Northampton. Yeah, third third down at about 16 or 17 yards. I don't, know, I don't know what the third and 17 call is, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and, and see what they come up with. Go wide, run fast. That didn't take long to call, so maybe, that, maybe that's what they said in the huddle there. So the same basic eye formation. They have one end split out to the right, one end tight to the left. Braden calls the signals, takes a snap, handoff up the middle. Number 22. Justin that was Rankin. Justin Rankins. Rankins. Tackles in the play. He did a good job there of actually holding on to the ball. I thought he was going to lose it there for a second on the handoff. Broke the first tackle, but that was an inside handoff, Rob, and that I don't think was really going to get us 17 yards. It's going to bring up a fourth and 11, and Northampton has elected to punt. That'll advance the ball back 15 yards, so 
the Eagles will take over just about where they left off last time. <laughs> Fast forward to just a little while ago. That's right. So you see a lot of players shuffling on and off the field. It's, it's warm out here today. I would say it's uh, somewhere probably in the low 80s. Uh, they're wearing dark blue uniforms. It's going to be hot. But luckily, the Blue Devils have a relatively deep roster of about 22 players, so they can shuffle players in and out as necessary and give everybody some adequate rest. And drink plenty of fluids. On the plenty of fluids. And speaking of fluids, if you're ever here down at the game, go down to the snack bar where there's lots to drink and lots of great food to eat. And how about some of our uh, sponsors, Rob? So we have a little break in the action. That's a, that. that be great to if I were ready for that, that, that would, I would lift them. <laughs> you know, maybe we didn't have a preseason either. Maybe I'll either. catch it on the next break. <laughs> now you can talk about the deuce. Yeah, to the credit of our cameraman, Andrew <laughs> Kesson, uh, we have a lot of sponsors back this year. Um, Northampton Youth Football would like to thank our cameraman, Andrew Kesson, not only as a cameraman, but apparently he's chief fundraiser <laughs> for the organization as well. Everybody pitches in when it comes to the NYFL. So the Belcher Town Eagles are taking over on their own 32-yard line. Quarterback comes up under center. The backs shuffle around a little bit to make sure they're in the right spot. Barks out the signals. Takes the snap. There's a handoff. There's a, There's a fumble. fumble. That, Recovered by is that Owen, is that Owen Schofo, number 75. It's going to be Northampton first and 10. That is Schofo, the line. first big play of the year, recorded by number 75. Andrew number 75, Schofo. Owen Schofo. That's Owen. That's Owen. up here with me. Owen Schofo. Owen Schofo. The big O. Way to go, Owen. Nice play for the Blue Devils. And that, of course, uh, illustrates what we were talking about. That's, that's obviously the really bad thing that can happen if you don't get the exchange right. So that means the Blue Devils will take over on the... 30-yard line of Belchertown, which puts them 20 yards away from a touchdown. And I will use this little break in the action to highlight the Blue and Gold major sponsor. We do have one this year. Uh, it's a significant financial commitment made on behalf of the, of the Calvin Coolidge Nursing Home. We really appreciate that. Our gold sponsors this year include uh, the law firm of Bacon and Wilson, particularly attorney Mark Tanner, the Andy Morrison family, and Liquors 44. Florence Savings Bank, Osberg and Associates, Pioneer Landscape, the Northampton Police Relief Association, R.K. Miles, and the Deuce. The Deuce, the World War II club. First and ten Blue Devils. Quarterback takes the snap. Nice little turn. There's a little spin move there by Justin Rankin. Still looking for some room. Runs into his own man. Pushed out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Looks like a tackle danced, by number 10 and number he 78 of Belcher Town. He twisted and he turned and all to get back to the line of scrimmage, but unfortunately there is a flag Green. on the play. Number 22 had a few broken tackles on the play. Looks like they're calling There's offensive holding on that play. Oh, blocking the back on the offense. That's just youthful enthusiasm there. That block in the back happens a lot in, at, uh, in the youth football program here. It's the kids get real fired up. They're excited. They want to contribute to the team. Unfortunately, they block the wrong side down. of the body. And as someone up here at the booth said, that is your a, an almost typical uh, peewee football play. Lots of action, not a lot of movement of the ball east or west. So that'll bring up first and 20 for the Blue Devils. Don't forget, everyone, uh, we are selling raffle tickets. There'll be someone uh, walking around selling them, so just go find that person. You at home are unable you to participate in our game raffle, but you certainly can sponsor the sponsor this program. Don't hesitate to go onto the website and help out. And this is just the first of what will be four home games, I believe, this year. So plenty of time this so season. There's some movement in the there was line. some movement. They did call it, and that the is the offsides on the offense. A false start on the right end. A little bit sloppy here at the beginning. That's not a surprise. Well, you know, these kids have a, they're a little nervous about the first game. Um, I'm sure they may be a little nervous about school starting next week and whatever else is going on. But it's still first down. Unfortunately, they now have 25 <laughs> yards to go for first down. Not far beyond the first down stake is the end zone. That, that is true. It's 10 yards closer, as we, as we know. So Hamp has uh, got it first and 25 from the Eagles 45 yard line. The good news is they have uh, four chances to get the 25 yards. Well, so the, once uh, the again, bachelor line of scrimmage. Between the quarterback and the running back seem a little seem a little challenged. Those are basic plays. I'm a little bit surprised that Hamp is having so much time trouble with the timing there. Oh. 
That's a big hit. That was that a big was, hit. Yeah, that was number 25, number Renner. That was a handoff to Renner. He eluded the Belcher first big Hunter. Belchertown player in the backfield. That was number 62. Jacob Renner. But then he was met Bring by his two buddies in similar, similar colored uniforms and didn't get very far. I think there's some uh, concern about the positioning of the Eagle players. There's a lot of rules to try to prevent um, aggressive defense. Um, this is the, this is football is a very complex game, and there are all sorts of rules about how players line up and how they set. And the Northampton coach, I think, rightly pointed out that one of the the Second Eagle players, here. probably the player who made the play, was set up in a in an obviously a very advantageous position, yeah. and he used it to crunch number 25 yeah play. the referee was just pointing out to the coach and the player that if if you're what they call an overweight player uh, that is a player who weighs over 80 pounds you have to play the line and if you're on the line you have to be in a three-point stance to start the play and you have to square up with the offensive player you can't you can't set up in the gaps so can't shoot the gaps yes right. and that as you say that's the way to avoid a really no, big kid running good. into a really little kid Oh, There's a lot of room to the right. I don't see any flags down. He's there. He's going. One more guy to beat. He beat him. I think he's Jacob Renner, first, first touchdown of the year. Whoa, what a great run on that play. I saw the official reaching for his back pocket. I thought he was going to go motion. He had me there for a second. He faked, he faked me out. He faked out everybody. And Hamp took advantage of the referee's uh, willingness to let a little bit of motion on the line. Get a, well, you know, a the referee wanted play. to see a little action, too. He's tired of, of walking well, Ham, backwards. Ham took full advantage. That was small motion. These guys are good peewee no players. It was good no call. no call. That's that's the word up here in the booth. good no <laughs> call for Northampton, who are going to go for two on the end of this on the end of that touchdown run. Nice run by number 25, Renner. Really showed great blocking explosive there by the speed. So the extra point attempt here will be a two-point attempt. Uh, there is no kicking of, of extra points here at the peewee level. You know, the, particularly the right side of that offensive line did a great job, and I, you know, I think that uh, number 67, uh, Pedersen, did a super job. Number 41 on that play sealed off the line. Number 41 is uh, not clear to me. Is that 41 over there? I'm that's Chevron Wall. That did a nice job sealing off that. There's a little quarterback keeper trying to get those two yards, and he did. did. Braden Tudrin with the two-point conversion. Good. That means the Blue Devils are up eight to nothing. Well, that's fantastic. So I did not see a signal for the end of the first quarter, but my suspicion is just looking at my watch that we might have creeped into the second quarter by now, but I'm not sure. Well, for those who may be new viewers to the broadcast, this is a constant guessing game that we have up here about how much time is left in the quarter. We'll just have to wait and see. In the half, at the end of the game, we're, we're, we're constantly guessing. Yeah, wait till it gets dark. Then we're really, literally and figuratively in the dark. And it looks like the only kickoff is the one to start the game. Am I looking at that correctly? Uh, we're going to find out if they start the second half with a kickoff as well. Well, while Ozzy is serenading in the background, we can also recognize some additional sponsors. Sponsors I know who are big Ozzy fans. That would include the Blue Bonnet Diner, Valley Home Improvement, <laughs> Whalen Insurance, Weber and Grinnell, Newman's Construction, right, and like Joe's Pizza. We'll start with the first and uh, family the sponsors this year include Ron Berenson and family and Mike Benedizic and family. Thanks to all our sponsors, uh, Northampton Youth Football couldn't go forward unless folks ponied up and, and offered uh, financial support, and we really appreciate it. Belchertown will take over on their own 40-yard line. They'll have a first and 10. The coaches are giving some last-minute instructions in the huddle. Looks like they got the play that they want to run. They've broken the huddle. I like those uniforms are up. Those are some sharp red, white, and blue uniforms, reminiscent Very of Patriot. some old, old Patriots old, old uniforms. uniforms. right. When they had that, uh, the old Patriot himself on the helmet. There's the snap. Uh-oh, he's being chased from behind. Is he going to be able to get to the outside? He found a little bit of a seam, but number he was taken two. down. Run by number six of Belcher Town, that Nicholas was Jaquan Taylor. Taylor. Jaquan Taylor. Taylor. That was a good nice play. play. Yeah, number 30, Tyrese Cox also uh, was. Tyrese scared him. He did, and Jack Quinn finished the job. And Edward Seraphin nice was play. also chasing him from behind. He got through his man, passed his man on the line. 
he's playing the left tackle position, and he chased that quarterback all the way to the other side of the field. And Jack Kwan showed off his celebratory dance there after that tackle. That's something we're going to have to watch out for, some entertainment value in that one. Yeah, particularly when you let the other guy, other team gain two or three yards, and then you're celebrating about it. But, well, you know. You know what? That was, that was, that was a great play. It was a good play. And, if and they only gain two yards a play, then uh, I think it's going to be a good day for him. We're always optimistic in the first first game of the season. Second and seven here for Belchertown. Belchertown comes up to the line. Second and seven or eight yards to go. Defense looks set. Offense looks set. Handoff looking to go to the left. There's a little bit of room. That's Someone Jack lost Vaughn a again. shoe out there. Run by number 41 of Belchertown, Tyler. Who was in on that tackle? That, that was, was number 54. And number 56 and number 68. Yeah, Cameron Lynn Fountain got in on that tackle. That was Edward Serafin as well. And I think uh, Owen Chelfo also was in on that tackle at the end. But the uh, number two, Jaquan, uh, had, uh, had the big hit on that. And I think he got a little shaken up on that. Yes, he did. And number seven, Tudrin, will report into the game. Play it is right almost corner. supper time, folks. So head on over to the food booth. So here's a big third down play. Uh, although they have really two downs to get the two yards because they probably wouldn't punt or give the ball away that close to the first down marker. So it looks like number 46, uh, Jonathan Rodriguez, is going to play the right corner and Tudorn will stay on uh, the left side and cover the big side of the field over here. It's going to bring up third and about, what is it? Looks like about two we'll yards. We'll call it so. about two yards. Eagles have a real good chance to advance the ball down. into the Blue Devils' half for the first time in this game. Need a big play by the defensive line here. Disrupt what they're doing. Let's see if they can pull it off. Quarterback under center. Takes the snap. There's a handoff. Looking for some room. Nothing. He there is, is no room on that. On. That was number, number 41. That, that was Chevron Wall. Wall. And number 54 was also in that play. Number, that would be uh, Cameron LaFountain. Cameron LaFountain. Those are those are good players. We make it a good play. So I've got some homework to do uh, over over the week. It was nice, very nice of folks Belcher to provide us with the roster, but they wanted to make it particularly challenging for us. So they put these in some sort of unique numerical order, where it sort of goes jumps around. So finding players and rosters is. Quite a challenge for my uh, my limited intellect. They felt we were getting too soft up here at the booth. Did, they yeah. wanted to they wanted to shake things up a little bit for us. You know we have number seven and two at the bottom. It looks like alphabetical order by last name at, at first glance. That doesn't help anybody who knows the names. Unfortunately, they're on the names on the back of their shirts. They only have their number. That was all me. That was all me. <laughs> From an Excel box. We're, we're very appreciative. We're flexible up here. Numbers and their weights. So and their weights and their birthdays. Let's not forget too. that. That's great, yeah. So here's a big fourth down play, fourth and two. Let's see, see if the Blue Devils can stand tall here. Quarterback takes a snap, fakes one handoff. There's, There's a, a ball fumble. on the ground. Oh. Let's see who's going to get there. Owen Shelfo puts the tag on for the tackle. It's a loss of six. Unfortunately, the razzle dazzle didn't work. They razzled, but they didn't get the dazzle. That was a little. Little fake there, and uh, unfortunately they couldn't get the. They did the fake very nicely. They were going to run a little end around, but unfortunately the second part of that just fizzled, and the ball dropped yeah. and hit. Takes over. Took first advantage. And, and part of it was that the quarterback did a good job of faking the handoff to the first back, but then instead of looking right to the second person he was going to hand off to, he took a little glance to see what the defensive linemen were doing. He took his eye off the play, and the play resulted in a fumble. Razzle dazzle, a lot of fun in the backyard, but on a big fourth and two, I think they just should have kept it simple, used their power game, and thrust forward. I bet they would have had success keeping it simple. Two, uh, oh, number 83 is left side. There he goes. He's, he's, he's lined up the right way Perfect. now. Number so Northampton takes Tyler's over. Awesome. The coaches in the field are making sure the player's in the right spot. Tudrin calls the signal, takes the snap. It's a pass oh, play. He's got him. He's got Had him. someone open, but unfortunately, a lot of Not people on the line field. forgot the block. He was surrounded by three Belchertown players, and he did the right thing and just kind of held on to that ball. That was a good play on the part of the quarterback. He, did have, he did have number 83, Tyler Vanoss, wide open out there on the wing, and we were all excited for the first uh, completed pass play of the year, but unfortunately a sack deterred the success of that plan. 
Well, if they could come back from a first and 25, I think they might be able to do a second and 14 here. Piece of cake. Piece of, no problem. Yep. How about, how about my favorite play, which is go wide and run fast? Give it to the fast guy. <laughs> pound, pound it wide. Well, I know the kids were excited. They just installed that pass play in practice this week, so there was a lot of hope that they'd be able to complete it. I'm sure we'll see it again. Absolutely. Tudrin up under center. Calls the signals. Takes the snap. There's a handoff. Right in there. Lose the first tackler. Trying to get outside. He does get outside. He drops the ball. Falls on it. Ball's live. Falling on by Belchertown. It's a lot of action again on that play. Unfortunately, unfortunately, did result in the way we wanted it to. And that's too bad because uh, number 25, Renner, did a nice job breaking that first tackle. That's his second time he's... He's really good at breaking those tackles yeah, in the backfield. Yeah, it's the second time he's fumbled the ball sort of in open space. He, you know, it's like his legs get going faster, and they go faster, and they go faster, and sometimes they go so fast that the ball slips right out of his hands. Yep, and I'm also wondering, uh, this is the first, their first game, as we've said. It's their first time playing with these new uniforms, and they can get a little bit... Slippery, the new uniforms on the numbers. So sometimes the ball can just kind of squirt out there. Absolutely. And it, makes you, it also makes you wonder if they're playing with a new ball as well. And the new balls, as you know, can also be slippery. So. First and 10 for Belchertown. Yeah, slippery uniforms. I don't know, at the 43. I so, think this is uh, the sixth year that Kesson Productions has been putting on these Blue Devil games. But not taken is it the fifth or sixth year, uh, Andrew Kesson? I think, it, I think it's six, yeah. It is the sixth year that mm -hmm. Kesson Productions. Blue Devils have been very fortunate to have uh, Kesson Productions. We need someone to take over, Rob. We need someone to take over next year. We do. If you're a, a aspiring filmmaker and you want an exciting gig next year, there will be four Don't opportunities. Don't forget to find Diana selling raffle tickets. Awfully Put tight there. Look at the, the nose guard in the center touching heads there. There you go. They're backed up now. There's a snap. Looking for someone to hand off to. Oh, no Big chance. Big Owen Shelfo in the backfield. It's a sack in the backfield by number oh, 75. No. That's the O-Dog. <laughs> Making his presence felt. I think the quarterback was a little bit confused. Uh, I, I don't so know who he was my, supposed to hit it to. My voice cracked. Let me try that again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Good play by Shelfo. The quarterback, uh, I, someone was confused there. The running back of the quarterback didn't know who was supposed to get the ball. Quarterback had a look at desperation. <laughs> Looking to give the ball to somebody. Yeah, that Shelfo kid, he is a terrific athlete. I've seen him on the baseball what? field. He runs well. He's strong. He's coordinated. And most of all, he's a little brother. So he's really mean and determined. He gets a lot of action at the home front on how to. He's got that little. He's got that little brother meanness that you just love when you're a, when you're a football coach. So that makes it second and let's call that 17 now for Belchertown. Um, frankly, they haven't had a lot of offense so far. Let's see what they can pull out of their bag of tricks. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to the back, found a little bit of room, met by the first person to meet him there was number six. That was Connor Mott. Run by number nine. Good play. And number 65, Renner, was also in on that play, and I think number 46, Jonathan Rodriguez, also contributed to the tackle. But it was number, number six, Mott, who had the situation. first contact and uh, really slowed the runner down. Will Shaw was also in there, and he looked like he got a little shaken up there on the play. He's going to yeah, come out, and they're going to check him out. Another veteran player and another little brother. But definitely, definitely a little shaken up on that play. And I think we just heard the two-minute warning. And you will notice if you're watching, uh, when the players do come off, if they've been shaken up a little bit, there is an EFT here on the sidelines who checks everybody out to make sure that they're okay. Looks like Will's okay. He's just kneeling down on the sideline, waiting for his next chance to get in there. And due to the generosity of so many of our sponsors, the uh, board of directors has researched and invested in top equipment for our players. I know the, uh, they, this, the safety is something we take very seriously at Northampton Youth Football, and to the credit of our board of directors in this community, these kids are playing with top equipment that meets every safety standard that one would hope for, for such. And in addition to the equipment, of course, is all the coaching. Uh, this is, they've been practicing since August 1st, so they've been practicing for a month on how to do things the right way. Belchertown takes a snap, uh, quarterback again, uh, looking for someone to hand off to. Ball ends up on the ground, wisely picked oh, up. 
And there's a tackle yeah, around Renner. the neck by Noah Renner. Yeah. Unfortunately, and he tackled him up around the neck, so that'll be a penalty. I, and I think the reason for that is he's about six inches taller. I don't think there was any intent to hurt. I think it was just the, the size differential, which is why he ended up high. Oh, I don't think there was any intent there. He was just trying, no. to, trying to bring the kid down. No. I thought that same thing. I, I believe if... Uh, and I think, I think, I think the, the offense can advance it. I'm going to make this up as I go along. Okay. The offense can advance its own fumble. The defense can't advance the fumble the other way. Does that sound about right? It's a good guess. I, I, I don't know. All right, we're going to go with that. We'll have our research staff check that out. And the coach on the Northampton sideline is just reminding the players not to tackle up around the neck, taking it as a teaching opportunity, which is what we want to see in our coaches. Head coach of the Pee Wees is in his second year. That's, yeah, that's Joe, Joe Lamana. Lamana. Yeah, and he's assisted by Eric Matakansky, Rich Salfrank, and Josh Tudor. And we really appreciate their contribution. Uh, Joe is a second year coach. He's got a great manner with the kids. We saw him do a nice job last year with a very inexperienced group. And we're already seeing some of the advantage of the experience they gained last year as uh, seen some terrific plays, particularly from the second year players. You need some veteran players, of course, uh, and with the Pee Wees, that would be the fourth graders. And Joe coached last year, even though his son was too young to play. And his son, Joseph, is playing this year. Uh, he's playing on the line. And I believe he's playing, yeah, he's, he's a third grader. So he's a young kid working hard out there. There he is right now in front of the coach, learning what he's supposed to do there, playing on the defensive line. It's a powerfully built young lad, isn't he? He certainly around. is, and and since we have the weights on our roster, we can tell that he is the third stoutest player on the roster, and probably about you know one of the shortest players on the roster. Well, if, if uh, fireplug is the yeah. term that comes to mind. Pasta Lamana. <laughs> First and ten after the penalty. Quarterback takes a snap. There's a hand up looking oh, nice for the, some room on the left. Got some room. Makes it to the secondary. Hit first, yeah, number one, the hit first by number 41, Chevron Wall, and then brought down by Benjamin Salfrank. Benjamin Salfrank. Nice tackle in the open field. That was a nice play. That was the best offensive play we've seen Belchertown run today. And there can't be much time left in the half. We had the two-minute warning not too long ago. That advanced the ball right up to the Northampton 24-yard line, which means it's only 14 yards from the goal. We did talk about the fact that the goals are moved 10 yards forward. This is an 80-yard field. So they have 14. The Belchertown Eagles only have 14 yards to go for their first score. 14 yards to go. I have confidence that the Blue Devils can put up a defensive stand here. Well, this is all with Will Shaw out. I know the coaches are anxious to get uh, Willie back in the game. Uh, they've had good success uh, moving the ball in the, uh, uh, since Will has come out of the game, and he seems like he's got his helmet on. I know he's anxious to get back in, and I'm sure he'll be fine for the second half. Maybe the coaches want to give him an extra long break so they know he's uh, top-notch and ready to go. Yeah, and a number of other first-team defensive linemen are sitting on the sideline as well. Uh, Owen Shelfo is one, and Aiden Peterson is another. But as we said, it's hot out there. There's a lot of players. A lot of kids want to get in there, and the coach is doing a good job of rotating them in and out. Yeah, and these kids do work hard, and it's important that they see some game time. All these kids have been working hard, as you said, since the 1st of August. And golly, they want to play. They want to get in there and get some They want to play. This is, uh, this, this is all about player development. It's all about teaching, and, and it's great that the coaches are getting all the players in the game. I said to Owen this morning, I can't believe it's football season. He said, Dad, I've been practicing for a month. They're ready to play. There's the snap. Quarterback hands off. Looking for some room on the right-hand side. And there is he is no met by go. Jacob that's, that's Renner. Boy, he's having a nice nice, nice game on both sides of the ball. Number 25, Renner's showing it on the cornerback. And he Run also had that great Matt, touchdown. Matthews. And it also shows the, the running back hesitated a little bit. And, and he just, once you hesitate Renner. like that, you're, you're doomed. Unless you're, Barry, unless you're Barry Sanders. And he's not on this field today. He's not. Second down and 11 and a half. Quarterback takes a snap. Looking to go up the middle. Found a little bit of room. Yeah, Jacob Renner, Renner again. Yeah, that was and that was also Justin Rankins. Tough run by Owen. Was maybe a gain of two yards there. Number 41, Severn Wall. I managed to rouse him down. And that is the is end that of the, the half. End nice of the job half. by the Blue Devils. At the end of the first half, it's Blue Devils 8, Belchertown Eagles 0.
Okay, we're getting ready to start the second half here at Tudrin Field at Smith Vocational High School. Blue Devils, eight. Belchertown Eagles, zero. It's September 1st, it's opening day, and it is a glorious day to launch the 2012 Northampton Youth football season. The Blue Devils, I think they had a pretty good first half. Uh, offense had a nice, we'll call it a drive, even though it re really the touchdown right. run was about 30, 30 yards or so. Defense, a uh, couple defense sacks. Super. I thought the defense played super. A couple uh, fumbles. Yeah. They, they played real well. The offense, the nine, offense clicked seven, on seven, one seven, play, seven, and that's all it really took. Uh, so far, I, so good. That's right. But uh, I think coaches can feel real good about the uh, effort on the defense. I, I'm sure they talked a lot about uh, timing and coordination and getting it all right on the offensive side of the ball. So here we go. Belchertown is going to be kicking off. And you were right, Rob. They are kicking off to start the second half. Here we go. What a kick. They're there. converging on it. Doesn't look like that's going to be much of a run back. Braden Dudrin was, was ripping the ball away from his teammate. He that was one. trying his hardest to run there. Alden Bacon on that play. That was number five. Alden Bacon, who successfully and received the kickoff. The Belchertown 28. So the Blue Devils will start on their own 30 yard line. I think number five wanted to pick the ball up and run, but I think he was afraid of being ta tackled by his own players. Well, that was a, there was not a, the, let's say that the blockers didn't really stay in their lanes on that one. No, everyone kind of converged on the ball. I think everybody wanted to pick up the ball and run. Can <laughs> well, you blame them? There's 11 players and only one ball. How That's often right. are you going to get a chance to touch it? It looked like one of those, uh, you know, that looked like a soccer game. It looked like, like a youth soccer game, yes. Right there. <laughs> everyone just converged <laughs> on the ball. Swarm ball, we called it. Coaches are looking for one last player to round out the 11 on the field. <laughs> Here they go. There we go. I think we got it set right now. Edward Serafin, the fortune of the game. And, you know, that's why you need four coaches out there. So you got to keep track of who's in and who's out when sometimes the kids aren't really keeping track of it themselves. First and 10 Blue Devils, they take over from their own 30-yard line, which, as we've talked about many times during this game, is only 20 yards from the goal line. So Braden Tudrin is up under center, calls out the signals, takes a snap. It's a quarterback keeper. Did not have much room. That was a nice play by the defensive lineman at Belchertown. He gave him a big bear hug from behind and just took him down. Gain of one, maybe. You need that play every once in a while to keep the defense honest. But I think I'm with you, Rob. Let's give it to the fast guy and run, bust it to the outside. You know, Belchertown is beefy in the, uh, on both their offensive and defensive line, and those those uh, powerful linemen have done a nice job uh, neutralizing everything inside today. Hamp, uh, they're going to have success. They're going to have success on the outside. We've seen it. We've seen it early. Let's see it now and see it late too. Let's see if the coaches listen to us as the Blue Devils break the huddle. Come on up to the line. The same eye formation we've seen pretty much the whole game. You know, since that first uh, exchange between center and quarterback, with the, there's a little movement. Well, we were commenting. Right we were commenting at the halftime that there's pretty much movement on any, every play, and we appreciate the fact that the uh, referees are showing discretion in calling it because, you know, this is the first game. These players are all a little bit anxious. They're doing their best, and they want to get a jump and. Sitting there and waiting for that call and waiting for that signal is actually a hard thing to do when you're nervous and you're anxious and it is opening day. So. And there's a big guy across the line waiting to block you. Yeah. Well, I know that the Pee Wees end their practice every day with drills to get the players used to the snap count. They're going to be working that again next week, I predict. You know, the pros make it look so simple and so easy, but these really are learned skills. Everything from timing your explosion off the snap to your first step to every part of this. There's a botched exchange, fumble leads to a line. fumble. Recovered by number seven. Recovered by Tudrin, and that's a loss of lost, two or uh, three. Six. Andrew, I'll take Making full responsibility for that because I did uh, make the mistake of mentioning that there hasn't been a one of those since the first play, and of course, the first play after I mentioned that there's a botch snap. Well, it looked to me like the center rushed the snap a little bit because he was worried about big old number 78 across the line from him. And he is a powerful player, and he's been a real force on defense. So he's, uh, the, the old man was, is right to be a little concerned, but I'm sure he can, he can do the job just fine. But this does bring up a big...
big, long third down play. Third and about 16 yards, and they are backed up to their own 14-yard line. So they're going to need to do something here because even if they end up punting the ball, they're going to give the Eagles the ball in a good field position. So let's see what they got. This is the formation they used on the last pass play. Nope, they're going to try to run it to the left-hand side. Renner has some got room. Plenty of room. He's, He's got to the outside. He cuts runner. it up the middle. And there's a penalty, too. It looked like it might have been a face mask. Yeah, no, they're hold, calling man. a hold. That's too bad because that hold came at the end of the play when he'd already gotten close to the first down marker. Great open field tackle by one of the Belchertown secondary. Let's see if Belchertown takes the penalty or not. I suspect they probably will. That was a 10-yard game. There's a penalty game. on the field here. On so Belcher, that, that penalty will take away the 10 yards they gained on the play, and we'll have a repeat third and 15. It's a third and 15 situation here. Damn. That is too bad because that was a terrific run. In fact, the uh, you repeat third down. When Renner came around the corner, he had a choice. He could either cut it up the middle or go outside. And if he had put a little move and headed outside, I think he was gone for a very long run. Uh, he did decide to go up the middle. It would have come back anyway. Well, I think here, nice if you look at it here, here's the point of confusion, and our cameraman was asking that too. Uh, the Belchertown coaches, they accepted the penalty because they thought it would be 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, and the referee the marked call. it off from the spot. So now the referees are discussing it because otherwise, in accepting the penalty, they just get a replay for Blue Devils. There are certain penalties that are considered spot fouls, and there are certain penalties that are marked off from the line of scrimmage. The spot foul being that the marked off yardages from the spot of the foul, which in this case, as we said, was pretty far down the field. Now we're really confused. So, so what ended up happening is um, the Blue Devils are going to punt. <laughs> Long story short, no, actually what happened is uh, Belchertown, well, I don't know what happened. Did they decline that either. penalty? That makes absolutely I no think, sense. I think, I, no, I know what happened. They, because it was a spot foul, and if they had accepted the penalty, the Blue Devils would have had another chance at third down. They declined the penalty. The ball is going to be and then in the Town That meant that that play Blue counted, down. which brought up fourth down, and the Blue Devils punted. Well, where are they punting from? Wouldn't they, wouldn't they punt from the end of the last play? Just go with it, Rob. I think it all, it's all going to work out here. It's on the 40-yard line. Uh, I'm very confused. Yeah, me too. This makes, I go from third to first. They this makes, this makes absolutely no sense. The only no, way it's it first down for, the, for Belchertown now. I know. So the only way that this may, would make sense is if, in fact, the down marker was wrong, and that was a Quick third down. Quick note to fans, I don't, uh, or for, I, Northampton Town. All right, we can, uh, we can uh, go uh, with that uh, one, too. Uh, we can go uh, with that uh, one. And so by a ticket, and what happens is every day throughout the month of October, they draw a, your lucky ticket. Okay, so it's first down for the Eagles. They are on the Blue Devils' 40-yard line. Yeah, I know what happened. Throughout the month of October, please visit the merchandise table. Yeah. Eagles, take the, the snap. Penalty, There's well, a handoff to the up back. Oh, He's... no. Oh, no. That's Did not. Shelfo. Good tackle there by number 65 for Ham. Owen oh, Shelfo no on the runner. tackle. So the, the Eagles quarterback faked the handoff to the up back, and the next person he saw had a blue uniform on. And that was Renner, and he cut and he deked Renner <laughs> only to run into the big arms of Shelfo. So once again, we see the defense uh, a little bit ahead of the offense at this point. But that makes sense because the offense, as you were saying, Rob, that requires a lot of timing, a lot of repetition, a lot of practice. Yeah, this will this will look very different in about three weeks, a couple of more weeks, a little game experience. Those first first game nerves. Second and eleven here. Set aside. Second down and eleven for the Eagles. They're looking for something good to happen on offense. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff. There's another fumble in the backfield, falls on it. By number 10. And yeah, the two guys the there to touch him down were number two, Jaquan Taylor, and number 75, Owen Shelfo. Even if, even if that play was successful, Jaquan had him nailed. That's that, that's that play they've tried to run a couple of times. You know, they've almost got it, but they, they, they botched Third it now, I think, three times. 
Well, I think what's working against Belchertown is that that play is slow to develop. And as we've seen out of Northampton, they got some quickness there in the secondary. And they're just getting in there and penetrating and, and busting the play. So that brings up third and let's call it 17 for Belchertown. So this is about where the ball would have been had this played out the way we suspected it should. Oh, I thought, I thought we'd moved play. past that. <laughs> still confused. I'm still Well, we may never know. We're just going to have to. We're going to have to live with it. Belchertown breaks the huddle, hustle up to the line. The coach is giving last-minute instructions to the quarterback, which I tend to think never really turns out well. But let's let's see. I could be wrong. That usually results in confusion. Quarterback calls the signal, drop oh, back. It's a pass. He's got somebody out there. Oh, almost that picked was, off. That was, that was number, number five. five. Alden Bacon. Alden Bacon, Bacon was Bacon. all over that. He was in perfect position. And the quarterback hit him right in the, the chest. Ball there, the quarterback. It was a good throw. But he threw that into, uh, let's say, a lot of traffic. I counted about four blue jerseys there around that one white jersey. Well, Alden was in perfect position, and this will bring up a punt. So the ball will be advanced 15 yards down the field, and this does make perfect sense. This makes me. perfect sense. We know exactly why this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> so another good defensive stand by the Northampton Blue Devils. And in fact, uh, Bacon did the right the right thing on that play. Had he caught the ball and been caught, the Blue Devils would have taken over, but they would have taken over even deeper in their own territory. So the fact that uh, Alden knocked that down worked out to the Blue Devils' favor. Yeah, but you got to look at it from his perspective. That's two times now he's touched the ball, once on the kickoff and once on the almost interception, and he didn't get the run with it. And that's kind of what everybody wants to do. But it was a good play. Unless you're being chased by number, big old number 68, in which case it worked out just fine. So Coaches are shouting for the last piece of the puzzle out there on offense. And, and again, this is running Number time. 41, Chevron Wall, hustles out there. I saw the official on the far side have his hat off. I think he was just catching his breath. I thought maybe this might be the beginning of the fourth quarter. These quarters do tend to move very quickly. It is running time. Time flies when you're having fun. It sure does. And they try to keep these games uh, within the allotted hour time frame. And one of the ways you do that is to keep that clock going. And Northam offense takes the field. Because for those of you out there who may not know, right after this game, we're going to see the juniors in action, and then we'll see the Northampton seniors in action after that. The triple header. Oh, there's the a little bit of again, motion again. And, and lots of bad stuff happening there. Oops. Flag on the field. I saw that play written up. It's O-O-P-S. Oops. You move yeah, early. You move early. They're going to rip. Watch the snap, and then we'll jump on the ball, and we'll try again. They're going to rip that page out of the playbook. That one yeah. didn't really work as they drew it up. They did take the penalty, though, and that brings up uh, first and 15. So we seem to be in a negative pattern here in the second half in terms of the offense. Neither offense really able to get anything going. It's those adjustments that the defense has made at halftime, I think, that contributed to this. The defensive coordinators on both teams are very strong. Tudrin takes a snap. It's a clean snap. There's a handoff. Got some room on the right. Nice block there by number 65. Number seven, Jordan Talbot with a great tackle. Noah Renner had a nice block oh, there to sure seal did. off the end for his brother. Got some substantial yardage. He did a great job, didn't he? Yes, and that brings up uh, that. Brings it back to the original line of scrimmage where it'll be fourth down. And I saw the near side official there was was considering calling a hold there, but I think he made the right decision. I think Renner did a nice job on that block. He had good form. Second and, and ten. I don't think he grabbed the jersey. Oh, so it's second and ten. They had a little problem with the down marker over there across the way. So that first down play after the penalty brings it back to close to the original line of scrimmage. So once again, we feel like we're right back where we started from. The sun has gone down, and it's quite pleasant here this evening. In fact, it, I felt a, a raindrop earlier. Was there any rain in the forecast today, Andrew? Uh, I heard a rumor of rain earlier today in the Chicopee area. I don't know how that affects our weather system here in Northampton. We have no rain equipment up here, so I'm hoping it doesn't. Tudrin takes a snap. There's a handoff. Rank, is that Rankin's looking that for room. 
Hang He's met ball. by half of the Eagles and finally brought down. Didn't get past the line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up third. Half of the Belchertown team. Third down. Hey, I said that. Third down. And that is the third quarter. I saw the official in indicate that we are at the end of the third quarter, and he's holding up. Uh, he's holding up down? a three to to signal to the volunteer oh, chain is. gang over there that it's third down. Right. And I think this is the fourth quarter. So yes, he just reset his watch. So we are in the fourth quarter. So he indicated third down, and then four fingers went up indicating fourth quarter. We're going to go with that. Fourth quarter, Blue Devils on top, 8 nothing against the Belchertown Eagles. Third and 10 for Hamp. I thought, I thought number 22, uh, Rankins was, or, uh, I'm sorry, that's uh, number number 22. Yeah, Justin Rankins was going to break one there. He uh, won a nice play by the Eagle defense. That was a good play. Look, he had some room there, and, and they, they pursued, and they closed on him, brought him down. So that's third down, 10 yards. Oh, that's a good block there, but. Tackle in the backfield by number 72, Hunter Englert. Create a fourth down for him. So as Rankins took the handoff, and his backfield mate a had a nice block to take out the first Belchertown Eagle who got there in the backfield. But the porous offensive line allowed another one. That's why. Blue so Devils are now punting. You've watched a number of practices. Does Northampton have any pitch plays in their offensive arsenal? Because they did have a pitch play and could get the ball outside more quickly. I think they'd have success on the outside. They're having a heck of a hard time running up the gut of this uh, Eagle defense. I haven't seen those plays in practice yet. Uh, and I think it's also what you said. I think the defense is actually, uh, they're catching up here in this game. They're playing, the defenses are playing better than they were in the first half. They're making it tougher for the offenses. First and 10 at the 45 for Belcher Town. Yeah, uh, Hamp seems to be, uh, to have some success when they when they get out in the corner, but they just they can't get it out there. They're just not getting it there quickly enough, and I'm Ready wondering stop if by the food they booth. have a the little pitch play where they, can, like the service. where they can get the guy in motion and carrying the ball heading toward the outside, whether or not that would lead to some, some more offensive yardage. These handoffs are just taking a little bit too long to uh, execute. Not as crisp as we'd like them to be. It is opening day. These get, these are third and fourth graders. Football is a very challenging game, and although they've been working hard for a month, for many of these players, this is the first month they've ever played real football. Belchertown breaks the huddle. They have first and 10 at the Blue Devil 45-yard line. It's the fourth quarter running time, so this may be their last opportunity here to tie this game. It is a big series for the Hamp defense. Takes the snap. A little room on the right-hand side. Who's Who wrapped him up there, Rob? I didn't quite yeah, catch that number. number. 41, Wall was definitely in a play. Chevron Wall. Chevy Wall is having a good game out there. I think, there. He, I think, I think uh, Shelfa was in on that tackle as he, well. He uh, made his way around there. He got in there at the end. Yep. Uh, but basically, he you know he's playing the right end position, and there was the left side of the line that did a good job there. Well, it must have been Serafin over there. We, have to, we probably should give credit to number 68, Serafin, who was right there. Uh, I think he did a nice job holding up his his... His end of the bargain. He stood up the offensive lineman, pursued and made the tackle. And that was a that handoff for Belchertown. That was a crisper handoff, kind of what we were looking for on the Blue Devil side. Seven. But the Blue Devils good a job, did a good job of of closing up that hole and bringing them down. So it's second down at about eight yards to go. Belchertown quarterback up under center, takes the snap. There's a keeper up the middle. Got a little bit of room. He's got a posse. He breaks the tackle. Gets a first down. Yeah. Finally brought down after a long gain by yeah, Jacob yeah. Renner and Braden Tudrin. That was a hide behind your hogs and just let them push down the field, Rob. Yeah, and unfortunately for the Blue Devils, that was a very successful play. Thank goodness uh, Renner was uh, heads up and made the nice tackle from behind, or we were looking at an 8-6 score on that one. We still might be. It is uh, first down and 10 to go, and they are on the 32-yard line. What's the math on that, Rob? 22 to go for the TD. So 22 to score. And again, we, we don't know how much time is left. Running time, though, things tend to go pretty quickly. Belchertown's got to be feeling pretty good. They, they've put together a couple of good plays. Let's see what the coaches are putting in for this one. I suspect we won't see that reverse again. I suspect. Maybe, I would, I would as, a, as a Northampton Blue Devil fan, I'm hoping they put that reverse in again, but 
I think they've had a lot of success just, just pounding it forward. Just go straight. Shortest distance between two points. Quarterback takes a snap, finds a backfield mate to hand it to. They lose the first tackle. Yeah, that was Braden Tudrin. That brought down by Tudrin. Also in that tackle is number 68, yeah, Ed Serafin. Serafin and Tudrin are uh, good in that tackle. Game. They did oh, a good job. Number 68, Serafin's having himself a whale of a ball game. Second and six. Second down, six yards to go. So that's three positive yardage plays in a row for the Belchertown Eagles. Yeah, that's number 54, Cameron LaFountain, uh, getting, getting a well-deserved break. And also joining him is uh, Edward Serafin on the sidelines, who's doing a great job. Both of those guys have done a nice job on that line. Yeah, because not only is it the fourth quarter and late in terms of who's going to score and whatnot, but these kids have been playing pretty hard for all afternoon, and it is pretty warm out there. So I'm sure these kids are getting a little tired. So Belchertown coaches are confident that they've called the right play. Don't forget about our food booth for refreshments or food. They break the huddle, and here we go. Second down, and let's call it six yards to go. Quarterback up under center, calls the signals, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, He's looking some for room. some room on the right. Oh, what That's a play. great what tackle. A play. That was a great Jacob tackle Renner. by Jacob Renner. I'll tell you what, if, if Renner isn't the game MVP, I'd be surprised. Boy, there's a there's a big number, big star for his helmet today. That was a super play. That might have been a game-saving play there by number 25, Renner. Not only did he have the only score of the day, but plays like that... Uh, really are impressive. He showed tremendous athleticism that play. Good speed, good balance, and, and the explosion through the tackle is just what you want to see when you're coaching uh, a defensive player on technique. And before that, he did a good job of not falling for the fake. A lot of his teammates went with the fake handoff. He stayed home, brought down the runner. Brings up third, and let's call it eight yards to go. Quarterback's up on her center. Backs are getting set. Takes the snap. There's a keeper up the middle. They're trying that little hoss play again. No this way. time, no the Blue Devils are ready for it. They In on sure that were. tackle, uh, that was number 22, number Justin Rankins. Let's see who that else was, was there. Shaw making that Will play. Shaw that feeling Shaw. better after getting Let's shaken up in the first half. About a fourth and seven. So here we go, Rob. Fourth and seven for the Belchertown Eagles. Willie imposed his will on that player there. He was going nowhere. Yeah, Will has, uh, I've seen him in practice. He's been playing like the veteran player that he is. Fourth and seven for the Eagles. They're on the 28-yard line. Means they got 18 yards to go to the goal line. And this is this is it. I mean, if Hamp, uh, presuming Hamp can hold them here and get at least one first down, that should be enough to run it, run the clock out on the uh, end of this first game. Play of the game right here. Here we go. Drum roll. We're all please. lined up. This is it. And Fourth I and think, six. yep, I think they have the first line offense defensive line in there. Here we go. There's a snap. There's the handoff. Oh, there's a big hold on Owen Shelfo. Yeah, the no referee really saw that and brought down a yeah. great tackle, number 30, Tyrese Cox. Yeah, there was no way to go. Tyrese makes the big play. That play was going to be nullified. That was a hold. Hamp will decline. Hamp will take over the ball. Hamp, great penetration by the Hamp stood up line. to the offensive threat. The defense stepped up when they needed to. Big series. Hamps take over. Hamp takes over. First and ten on the their own 28-yard line. That was a good defensive stance. Like we've said that for the fourth or fifth time today. Uh, the Northampton Blue Devil defense. They're playing very strong. And on that play, uh, the defensive line of the Blue Devils just overwhelmed the offensive line of the Eagles. Forget about the 50-50 raffle. So here we have first down for the Blue Devils, and I can assume we're going to see some very conservative plays to eat some time off the clock. Yeah, I think uh, if they can if they can manage at least one first down, that's going to be awfully tough for the uh, for the Eagles to stop the clock. They do have a few timeouts; they can use those timeouts to stop the clock, but it's going to be tough. Coaches are doing their last minute shuffling here, putting in some players. Final piece to the puzzle there, so they have all the right players in place before they run the play. Belchertown coaches trying to figure out how they can get the ball back, perhaps. 
And this looks like a formation we've seen before, Rob. Might they be trying a pass play? Uh, be surprising if they did. Yeah, this is not the time for it, that's for sure. Quarterback takes a the snap. There's the handoff. Big hole up the middle. Oh, he got Find some room. That's a good tackle. That was carried by Justin Rankins. He was brought down just by the, the fingernail tackle he was, by but, the Eagles. But that was after a five-yard game. Great first down play. Another great run. That five-yard gain by, number, Rankins. by Rankins was key. It was a real nice block on the right side of that line. I couldn't see who made the, made the key block, but it was a, it was a big one. So Rankin's uh, shaking up a little bit. He's going to come off and take a breather. And in his place going in is Tyrese Cox, Cox number 30. 30 yep. You don't like to see that, but I'm, he's walking off under his own power. They'll check him out, and we'll see how he is. Coach is in the huddle. They're going to call the right play. I like that little counter play, a little inside the tackle. Play. It's a conservative play. It's an easy handoff. Tudrin does have a tendency to uh, hand off using a hand. sort of a long motion. The coaches will probably be working with him to sort of simplify that. He sort of takes the ball way away from his body and then he sort of thrusts it into the abdomen of his runner. Simplify that, that, that handoff a little bit. There we go. Takes the snap. He's and trying to get it to the outside. The Jacob Renner tackling the backfield. That was a loss of about four yards. And number 72, Hunter Angler. I tell you, that defensive line for Belchertown, they got some big boys on there, and they, they're doing a good job. Yeah, and big athletic boys. I mean, they've done a real nice job. They've shown some speed and some agility. This, uh, I think the Belchertown coaches should be able to feel real good about the play of their uh, defensive linemen, and that is the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. So two I think we're right. Uh, Hamp needed to get one first down in order to control this through the end of the game, but, boy, it's going to take a big play here on third down to do that. North End offense is facing about a third and nine. Because we know that they're going to punt if they don't uh, get the first down here. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of big offensive plays, so it would be nice to see one right about here. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if we see number 25's number called running, uh, running left here. What do you think? Well, he's running left. Makes the first tackler miss, second tackler, third tackler. First down! Gets the first down. What an effort. Excellent tackle by one of the players in the Belchertown secondary. Looks like number four. That was one Jacob nine. Renner. Laramie. And that dive of his after that Schuston tackle. Run. That's the play you were talking about, that Rob. Was the play. He just had the direction the wrong way. That was that play left. Go but wide, also, run fast. Also nice to see there is that he knew exactly where the first down marker was sure and he was, dove he for it. He was not going to be denied. And made it. What a, what a, what a determined play. got a great play. push there by the Northampton offensive line. Super play, super play. That was, a, that was a big play at the big time by a big time player. Number 25 Renner has had a, had a great opening day. So that should bring us ever closer to the final gun. They're going to have a few downs here to milk some time off the clock. Up, oh, up, oh, there's a mumble, fumble snap. Let's see who got it. There's a big scrum out there. I think two children held on to the ball. No, who got that? That was Chevy Wall. I don't know how he ended up with the ball. A short gain for him. So that'll bring up second down and nine to go. But we're not so much concerned with the yardage left to go to first down. And we do have a timeout. Timeout on the field. Looks like there's an injured Belchertown player. Second down and nine for the Blue Devils here late in the fourth quarter. Belchertown is going to do what they can to try to get the ball back. Waning moments of the game. Blue Devils up 8 nothing in what has been a defensive battle all day long. Blue Devils up at the line, ready to call the play. Braden Tudrin up under center, takes the snap, looks to his left, He's trying to find some room, holds onto the ball, gains about three Braden yards. Lower his head again, that's a couple yards, forcing yep. a third and eight. And that is what we want to see, Rob. We want to see them get the, the clock moving. We do. Braden is a fourth grader at Hadley Elementary, and he loves playing football. He's also a uh, big time three sport athlete and we're pleased that he decided to come over to the bridge and join the uh, camp football squad. 
We also want to talk a little bit about Jonathan Rodriguez, number 46. He's a first-year player, and he's a third grader at Jackson Street School. His favorite subject is reading. We love to see that. Reading like, is fundamental, Rob. We do, and we love, we love when our football players take their academics seriously. They'll all be taking it seriously when school starts for most of them on Tuesday. And we're particularly pleased, too, that he joined us after a two-year soccer career, and we're hoping he never goes back. Oh, that looked like a little bit of motion there. Fumble, I don't know who recovered it. On the backfield by number 78, Christopher Green. That's the that's game. That's the ball game. What a great way to start the season. The Northampton Blue Devils. Northampton Blue Devils, the eight. The Belchertown Eagles, Eagles eight zero. Their home opener. They are now 1-0. That's a great way to start the season. Great job on the defense. They had the big offensive play. Definite game MVP game number 25 today. Boy, he had a he had a, he had a heck of a game. He, sh he sure did. Good game, Rob. Looking forward to a good season with you. It was fun. Let's hope. Let's hope the rest of them end up just like this one. Final score: Blue Devils eight, Belchertown Eagles zero.